Hi and welcome. The next couple of videos in this series on that very useful piece of software, Accelerus Draw 4.1. We'll be looking at some of the features of the program in a bit more detail. It's not going to be a systematic view of the program, just a look at some of the things I, might, I think you might find interesting. Um, here's our old friend ATP, which we drew, drew in a previous video. Um, I've set the selection tool to the sort of rectangular selection tool, which is convenient to use when you only have a few things on the screen. If you've got quite a lot of things which you might accidentally select other, other things, using the lasso tool is still best. Uh, okay, so I'm going to select the molecule to make it the focus of our interest. Now, if we go to the chemistry menu, there is an option called Calculator, which when you click on this, brings up some useful information about ATP. It brings up the formula weight, calculate in two slightly different ways. We can set the number of decimal places we want in the answer, and when we're happy, we click on paste, it appears in here as a text object, which we can grab around. That's another useful thing about using the oblong select tool. It's quite easy to move things around. Uh, so if you, apart from anything else, if you want to quickly know the exact molar mass of ATP, this will tell you. Okay, right. Um, this is obviously a two-dimensional representation of ATP. Uh, it's possible to upload a what's called an ActiveX control into Excelsior Draw 4.1 to give us a basic 3D viewer. Uh, it's quite a nice one. Probably not as good. It's saying, well, it certainly isn't as good as the more sophisticated ones such as Rasmol or GMO. Uh, but it's quite easy to use and can give some useful insights into the shapes of molecules. Okay, if you go to chemistry at the moment, you'll see there's an option grayed out called Discovery Studio 3D Viewer. Okay, if we again select ATP, when we look at it again, we'll find it's now not greyed out. Now, I've already installed the control here, so when I click on it, it's going to start. What will happen is, when you install it, you'll be setting a website, and it'll give you the opportunity of downloading this ActiveX control. Uh, in this case, I downloaded the desk top, and I just clicked on this, and it installed itself in Acceleris Draw. Okay, so now when I go to... Um, Discovery Studio 3D Viewer. I click on there, it gives me an option. Do you want to convert 2D structure to 3D? Now, this isn't affecting the underlying structure. It's going to generate a new window. So we click on Yes, and this little 3D window appears. Okay, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just by dragging it to the side. Okay, I'm holding on the right mouse button, which is allowing me to rotate the molecule in, in, uh, in both, di both directions. Uh, at the moment, it looks a bit sort of unfamiliar. We don't appear to have any bobbly bits indicating atoms, and we see now bonds which half one colour, half another. If we right click, a menu appears, and we can go to display as. There's a number of different options here. We've got a ball and stick, display as ball and stick. We see the fam familiar little bobbles indicating atoms appear again. Uh, you may remember from a previous video, these are conventional colours uh, representing different elements in models. Obviously, atoms are smaller than the wavelength of light, so they don't have colours, but conventionally we say, for example, that nitrogen is blue, carbon is grey, oxygen is red, and this orangey colour is, in fact, phosphorus. OK, so I say we can, we can rotate the molecule quite nicely. We can see a number of things about it. We can notice the plane and nature of the aromatic system over here compared to, say, the sugar or the rest of the molecule. Uh, there's a number of different options you can use here. Uh, a number of different display options, including this one, which I always think is a bit strange. Uh, you sort of see that in American textbooks. I'm not really sure it, it does that much for me. But you may like it. And if you can find a reason for justifying its use, that's perfectly fine. Uh, another number of other display has options. We can uh, make the molecule spin. Uh, I'm going to turn it back to uh, scale ball and stick, which is quite a nice way of viewing it. Uh, so if you get a, uh, a display on a video presentation, you can have this running. Um, it's not really adding too much to our knowledge of the molecule, so I'm going to stop it spinning now. Uh, there's an option to record a storyboard. And what that means is you can arrange the molecule in different orientations and record several stages of that, which you can then export as a storyboard. Um, the export format's a, a bit sort of unusual, and you probably won't have come across it. Um, we do need to have a little bit of programming savvy about what you use it. Alternately, you can just use a, a screen capture option, such as Cam Studio. I have uh, some videos on using Cam Studio to do screen capture of presentations, but it'll e equally well worth it. Will 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 work in off in a display such as this. I'll link that in the info bar. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, all right, so that was quite nice. Um, so we've got the next page.
Okay, we've got some structures here. Um, one of the things which uh, beginning chemists, beginning biochemists, uh, have to do is nomenclature. And here's a, a structure which would be nice to know the name of if you practice in nomenclature. And fortunately, it's a very easy way to find it. If we just go to select again and select the molecule and go to chemistry, there is an option called generate text from structure, IUPAC name. So this is given as the official name from the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So I'll click there, and lo and behold, it tells us it's 2 chloro hexan one -ol. Uh You often see that with an E there as well. Both uh, are equally correct. Okay, there's another couple of molecules over here, which we will select and do the similar operation here. Generate text from structure. Okay, it's called it Z. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Explain what that means. Now, let's do the second one first. Right, um, before I go any further, I'm just going to show you a way to line up objects. I've selected the two objects there, which obviously aren't lined up. We go to a line. There's a number of ways we're going to line them. Top, bottom, centre is where we want them. So you notice now they're nicely lined up. Uh, now, when you looked at that, you probably thought, oh, well, this is this is, this is cis orientation. So it's cis butuene, and this is the trans butuene. When the system gets the names, it, it, it defaults to something called the Z and E system. Uh, based on something called the Kant Ingol Prelog rules. Cis and trans is fine for most biochemical situations, but in more complicated molecules which have uh, a couple have different things basically attached across the double bond, you'll find it doesn't work. So it, it, the Z and E format will default. But obviously Z in, in this case is equivalent to cis and E in this case is equivalent to trans. Um, so have a look at these two molecules, we'll just name them as well. Um, so generate stru text and structure. Need a pack name. So quite a long name there. And we'll do it for the second one. Okay. Again, select them. And we've got to right click and align them in the same way. It's remembered what what where we did last time. So I think this is quite useful if you are revising the nomenclature. You can bash some structures out fairly quickly. Some you know structures uh, you're comfortable with. Uh, based on the stuff you've done in the lectures, have a go at naming them yourselves, and then use the tool, of the uh, the uh, structure, the text tool, to find out what their actual name is. Uh, we can also sort of do three-dimensional representations of these as well. It's always worth having a look at these. Um, so I'm not I'm not going to do all the atoms in here, but uh, again, you can see the three three-dimensional representation of these two different isomers. Okay, I'm going to stop this video here now, and we'll start up again in a minute, uh, looking at another aspect of Accelerostraw.